Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. One of the questions I get asked all the time is what do you do with your quilts and where do you store them and how do you store them? And so we actually keep our quilts in a large quilt library and my granddaughter-in-law is over that and I'm gonna ask her to show you how to fold a quilt and show you our quilt library. So have some fun with Aislinn. Hi, I'm Aislinn Earnhardt. I'm the quilt librarian here at Missouri Star Quilt Company. I help store and label all the quilts that we make here and I keep track of them so whenever they need them I'm able to go in and pull them just like a librarian would with books normally, but I'm doing it with quilts. There are tons of quilts in our quilt library. We make close to 150 quilts every year because there's one every week for tutorials and then we have all the quilts for a block every year. And there are also those little projects that we make along the way for the product team and stuff that we're showing on our website. So today I'm gonna to show you how to label your quilts, how to fold them, and how to store them to keep them safe. So I have a couple labels over here. We start off with having the, begin the last two digits of our year. So 2020, we have the 20, and then the last three digits is the number that quilt is in the order that it was made. And at home, you'll probably want to do the year or date it was made so you know when you made that quilt. And then we go on, we have the name of the quilt. So this is Bird of Paradise. And then we also have the fabric that was used to make it and the designer and the company. And then I also write what store it was made in because since we have so many shops here at Missouri Star Quilt Co, I wanna make sure I put the quilt in the right shop. And then I also have at the bottom what platform this quilt was made for. So this was a triple play on YouTube. And then I also have the size because sometimes whenever we pull a quilt, we want it to be a certain size to fit a certain space. So I have that there. So in my spreadsheet, whenever I'm looking at the quilts, I don't have to unfold every single quilt to get the right quilt that I want. And then here are just a couple, and this is probably two months worth of YouTube. So you can see there are a lot of quilts that we have to keep track of and make labels for. Next, I will show you how to fold the quilts that I store. Okay, here's a quilt that I've pulled from our quilt library, and I will begin by unfolding it, getting it stretched out, When folding the quilt, I always have the label in the bottom left corner because on the front of the quilt, that's the bottom right, and we always put our labels in the bottom right so I know which way this quilt goes because some of them depend heavily on what way they are orientated. So I will begin by taking the bottom right corner and taking it up to the left side, and I crease it so this corner on the bottom left is folded in half, and then I put the binding together all the way up until you have a triangle. And on perfect square quilts, the corners will meet, but this one is a rectangle, so that is why they do not line up perfectly. And then I normally flip it, so I have the point of the triangle pointing towards me. And then I'll take the points and I'll go up so that these line up. Usually in a quilt, they will line up with the way the blocks are sewn. And then I'll take that and I'll fold it in half again. And then I take my edges and I fold them and I try not to crease them too much here. And then I'll fold them like that. And then once more, so it's nice and neat. And we do this folding it on the bias because it helps protect your quilt from getting those permanent creases from sitting on a shelf folded or stored away. And then so whenever you pull it out, those wrinkles just fall out so they don't get worn into the quilt. And then also whenever I am storing my quilts, I store them up like a book so that they're easier to see because if you have a larger quilt on a small one, it'll drape over hiding it and you won't be able to see what quilt is which and that can be a big problem whenever you're looking for that certain quilt. Hopefully this helps you learn how to label your quilts and store them so that you can remember when you made this quilt and why you made it and hopefully this brings some insight to how we keep track of all these quilts we make here at Missouri Star and that you know that they don't get lost in just some random pile somewhere. Somebody's here taking good care of them. Thank you.